Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweet, and I'm and this is going to be a complete skin retouching tutorial from the very start to the very end using frequency separation. So, frequency separation is a skin retouching technique that is going to divide the image into the textures and the colors. So, when you combine both the textures and the colors, you're going to be having or going to be getting the image the way it was meant to be before, but in a way refined aspect. So, let's just skin with this image taken by Wildly Photography. I'm going to link his Instagram channel in the description of this fair video. So we're just going to come to the background now and we're just going to create those two layers. That is the layer that is containing the colors and one that is containing the textures. We're just going to come and press Ctrl Command J twice and we're going to double click to rename that to low and we're going to name this to high. So we have these two layers right now. So what we're going to do, we're just going to come and select the low frequency layer and simply hide the high frequency layer. So just want to remain with the colors or the skin tones in this layer. So just come to filter and I'm using Photoshop 2020. Filter blur come down to Gaussian blur right here. So when you come to Gaussian blur, we have to start moving the radius up to a point when we are just starting to close out on the textures or the details in the image. So just going to take it up slightly as we are looking at the image up to a point when we are just starting to close out on the textures or the details in the image. So at around five I feel that is okay so the radius may differ depending on the textures or how sharp or how detailed your image is and this extra disclaimer i'm using a low resolution image so sometimes you may have to bear with me as i'm retouching this along so just going to come to the high frequency and now activate it by clicking on the eye icon or on the visibility icon and simply come to image right here and i'm going to come to apply image so when i come to apply image I'll, i'm going to get back another window right here so for this case since i'm dealing with an 8-bit image i'm just going to come and select the low frequency layer from which we are going to be extracting our, our details or our textures and the blend mode i'm just going to be using is going to be add because i have a 16-bit image for an 8-bit image rather i have an 8-bit image right now but for a 16-bit image you have to use a blend mode of add so for right now, I'm just going to be using Subtract and I have complete beginner tutorials and I, I may link a video for you if at all you're interested in learning from the very start to the very end right above here. So the blend mode is going to be Subtract, the opacity at 100, preserve transparency and mask are not checked. The scale is 2 offset 128, make sure invert is not checked and I'm just going to press OK. Then come to the blend mode and change it to linear light right here and I'm just going to come and turn it to linear light. So after doing that, I'm just going to come and group these two layers by pressing Ctrl Command and clicking on both and pressing Ctrl G or Command G on the keyboard. And I'm going to name this to Frequency Separation. So I'm just going to turn this on and off. You can see there's no difference between the original image and our frequency separated image. So I'm just going to click on the drop down icon right here and I'm going to select the low frequency layer. So come under the brushes and simply right click and get what is known as the mixer brush tool. But if at all you don't have your mixer brush tool under the brushes, you can come right here if at all you have older versions of Photoshop. And you may find your mixer brush tool under this option right here. So make sure you set the mixer brush tool to blend or even out the transitions within the skin tone quite well. So make sure the hardness is at 0% and make sure it is a clean brush right here. Make sure we have this option selected which says clean the brush after each and every stroke and the weight is going to be nine percent the load of 75 the mix at 90 and the flow of 100 percent make sure sample order is not ticked or checked because you only want to work with the information in the low frequency layer, which is the colors or the skin tone so make sure sample order is not checked make sure you select the low frequency layer so in order to see the uneven skin tone transitions i prefer to turn off the high frequency layer and the high distort i can only see the colors so we are just going to be painting on the skin area and blending the colors using the mixer brush tool and in order to increase the size of the mixer brush tool you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard to do that for you and if at all your mixer brush tool is showing a plus icon make sure you turn off the caps lock key to have the circle right now so we're just going to be painting and as you're painting on the skin area make sure you don't zoom all the way in because when you do this you are not going to be seeing the colors quite well so you have to retouch at a distance this is fine so to zoom in or out make sure you use ctrl command plus on your image or on your uh keyboard so i'm just going to start evening the colors just like that using 
So I'm simply left clicking and painting following the facial direction. And you can see when it comes to the forehead, I'm moving it in that kind of direction and I'm just going to be painting just like that. Reduce on the size and I work on a different area and I'm going to paint in those areas just like that. You can see it is now making or flattening the skin tones which is our major aim for this tutorial. So I'm just going to be painting through and I unify the skin tone transitions and you can see this makes the image plastic but the more plastic it gets the better the results from your retouching process. So always make sure that you're aiming at evening out the skin tones until when the skin looks plastic. The trick behind this is because you turned off the texture layers but when you turn them off you're going to be getting back the textures the way they are meant to be in your image. So turn it off and make sure you're still on the low frequency layer and come to the cheekbone and just come and paint those areas just like that and you can see it is doing a pretty a wonderful job right now so we're just going to work on the skin tones first before we can go in and clean or remove the blemishes in this very image reduce on the size and remove this right now and just paint you can see the image is getting to look a little bit plastic but like I said, the more plastic it is getting, the better the results from the skin retouching process that you're going to be having at the end of this also. Let's just do some magic right now. So let's just paint the colors just like that. And when we are done, we're just going to be working on the textures right away. And I want to show you the great job we're going to do at the end of this. And if at all you're loving this, don't forget to like this video. And don't forget to subscribe. If at all you're not yet subscribed to this channel, so let's just work on the skin tones first and we are going to be cleaning up the image later on in this very tutorial. So I'm just going to be cleaning up this or blending the colors. So let me just come to other areas. Remember, when you're doing skin retouching, you want to do it on the overall image and you don't want to miss out other areas. For example, the fingers, the hands, the neck. So make sure you blend every area that contains or has skin in your images. And this looks okay. Looks great. So let's turn on the textures and we we'll see what we have done so far. That's the before and after, before, after. So we're just going to come right on the eyebrow right here and just paint like that to even the transitions within the skin color or the skin tones. So we are done using the Mr. Brush tool. So the next technique that I prefer to use after using the mixer brush tool is coming and getting the lasso tool right here and I make sure new selection mode is active and make sure the feather is 22 pixels or I make sure it is between 18 and 22 pixels and I come and I make a selection so I know some of you may be familiar with the technique I'm using right now we are using the lasso tool to fine tune the, the areas we may have missed out when we are using the mixer brush tool to even or blend the transitions within the skin so come to filter, blur and come to gush and blur and it's at this, at this point when I take this up, up to the point when I'm having a better skin result in the image. So I'm just going to take this up, up to that very point. So at around 15, right there, so I'm just going to type in 15. That is when I have a nice skin tone transition and a great texture for my image right now. So I'm just going to come and apply it on the rest of the area, just like that. Come and make a selection. You can see I'm making selections according to the shape that I want to apply the effect. And when you feel like it is too much, right click on the selection and come to fade Gaussian blur and simply reduce on the opacity. And I'm just going to do that onto the rest of the area. So to deselect, just click outside the selection and it is automatically going to deselect that selection for you. Like you're seeing what I'm doing right now. So I'm just going to do that for the rest of uh, the areas that have skin in this portrait and we're just going to be done with this in a very very short time and the next thing that we're going to do is going to be the time changer or the game changer for this very portrait so just look at the before and after so far that's the before and after before after so next thing is going to be blemish removal and i want to show you how it is done and I'll have to forward this to the very end for the blemish removal so that you don't take so much time because this is going to really take quite a lot of time. So I'm just going to come and select the texture or the layer that is containing the textures that is the high frequency layer 
and now zoom in and I'm going to show you how to remove blemishes from your images so I get the texture layer and come and get the clone stamp tool and make sure the hardness is between 30 and 40 I prefer 34 and the mode has to be no more opacity and the flat 100 percent align is selected and make sure sample is on the current layer because only want to work on the details in the current layer so how this basically works you sample and I'm sorry about this you sample and paint over the blemish so in order to increase or decrease on the size of the clone sample tool you can use the open and close bracket still so in order to remove this blemish I'm going to hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and left click close to the blemish and simply release the alternate and simply left click over the blemish so how it is done you hold down the alternate key on the keyboard close to the blemish and left click to copy a clean area next to the blemish and release both the alternate and left click button and simply left click over the blemish so that is what i'm going to do for the next couple of minutes and i'm going to be forwarding this right now Hello YouTube, hope you're still here and I just want to show you the progress so far. I've been removing blemishes for the last 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes and I'm done removing the blemishes. So this is what we have right now, that's the before and this is what we have after. And right now what we want, we just want to refine the retouched image and have the best out of it. So we're just going to run a second frequency separation layer on it and we refine or retouch it better. So I'm just going to close this group and I'm going to come and create a stamp visible layer by pressing shift alternate control E on the keyboard or shift alternate command E on the keyboard and create a stamp visible layer and I'm going to create another two layers by pressing control command J twice and I'm going to name this to low so that you don't get lost along the way and I'm going to name this to high. We're going to use the same results and we're going to do the same process once again. So come the low frequency layer and hide this and come to filter blur and come down to Gaussian blur right now and you're going to put a radius of 5 like we used in the first step and press enter come and select the high frequency layer and now activate it and come back image and come down to apply image when you come to apply image you're just going to select this low frequency layer and use the blend mode of subtract to pass and flat 100 percent the scale is to offset 128 make sure preserve transparency and mask cannot check and simply press ok change the blend mode from normal and we are going to use the same linear light right now and we are going to hide this and select the low frequency layer get the missile brush tool with the same settings that we used in the first place and we are going to paint and refine the blend mode of all the blending of the skin tone so 
this is going to make you really wild at the end of the process remember we are now fine tuning so remember the image wasn't all that nice so we're just going to be fine tuning this uh, to a perfect image you can see we are now blending the textures or the skin tones rather to have a more better or a betterly retouched image if at all my english is fine that way just going to come and blend this right here and you can see this is really getting better and beautiful double b i don't know how i even rhymed those so i'm just going to do this and blend as uh, the image and i show you what i have at the end of this process and this is going to change or make you really mind blown at the end of this very process because this is going to show you the power of frequency separation and how fast we are able to to do this remember the most time consuming step was at uh, the cleaning up or the blemish removal process but as soon as you're done with that you're going to be amazed and really satisfied with your work as the person that was doing the editing so i'm just going to show you a, what we have right now just look at this image right now and tell me if at all you wouldn't be proud of yourself after doing such an amazing job just going to put these two in a group and press ctrl command g and just look at the second frequency separation and what it was able to help us achieve in this image so just going to open this and continue working and refining the image even more until when you feel like we have the best results from the retouching process and just going to blend right in those areas and fine tune those areas even more so this is what we have right now this is the before and after for a second frequency separation process so we just want to see the overall before and after for a retouching of this image and i'm just going to hold an alternate and you can see the before and this is the after before after before after look at how amazing the image has turned out to be in this case what i'm going to do i'm just going to do a little bit of eye whitening to the eyes of the model just going to come and create a hue and saturation layer right here and i'm going to take down the the saturation of the master all the way down to around negative 96 and i'm going to invert this layer by pressing ctrl command i on the keyboard and i'm going to get a brush tool simply right click and get the brush tool the hardness is going to be at zero percent opacity at 100 percent and the flow of 100 percent make sure you have black and white right, right in do these two small boxes here down on your top left hand corner and make sure you use x on the keyboard if at all you don't have these colors click on these two small boxes and make sure you have white on top by use, using x on the keyboard and you're going to reveal all white in the eyes of our model right now so i'm just going to paint in the white area and that is going to whiten the eyes and make the eyes really better and pop out just like that command minus so let's so look at the overall before and after for this very image so this is the image initially before and after before after so this is it for this story and if at all you have loved this don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i see you need more amazing stories and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating